Hey there, this is Angie M of Life by Angie M. Just popping on here quickly to do a little bit of a get ready with me. And I am going to be uh, kind of second chancing, triple chancing the Natasha Denona Metropolis palette. I find that the shadows in here don't perform as well as other shadows that I have, which is madly frustrating. I keep giving it more chances, hoping that maybe it's just me. I personally am not a fan of any makeup that claims a learning curve, all right? Switching from pediatrics to neurosurgery is going to have a learning curve. Makeup that you've been wearing in some capacity or other really shouldn't. I don't care what the formula is, you should be able to figure it out, particularly if it's something that is marketed to your everyday average consumer. So we're gonna get into that. I'm just going to go through a little bit. I've been working on my monthly check-in with my Danielle Laporte planner, kind of been going through a little bit of a change there as well and looking realistically at what lights me up and what's gonna bring me some joy for the coming months so I can feel a little bit less stressed. And this is one of those things, if you see me getting really close, it's A, because I'm gonna to need to be able to see what I'm doing and B, because I'm going to be applying some product. I do, I am in my, my bathroom and I'm just realizing that you are going to see my relatively ugly shower curtain. I, I, I can't be bothered with trying to move everything that I need into a different space. So I can be like, look, here's something more aesthetically pleasing. I'm gonna do what I would consider an everyday makeup look for me, what I would typically wear to work. And I, I, can't, be, I can't be bothered to worry about that. So before I started, I did take just a generic cotton round and a little bit of my Bioderma to make sure I had all the oils off of my eyelids before I started. I have deeply hooded eyelids and they do get oily, so I have to also use a primer. The Too Faced Shadow Insurance is my hands down favorite. I have tried others. They don't work as well for me and this guy just, this guy fits the bill. So what I do typically, I'm just gonna take a little bit right on my index finger and just get it on my eye. I am wearing my contact lenses. I am trying to wear them much more frequently. I have found that when I wear them as frequently as I have been, that my eyes do adjust nicely to them and aren't as dry. If I wear them sporadically, just wearing my glasses most of the time, then I do find that I have more of a problem when I switch to the contact lenses in terms of comfort and how my eyes adjust. So it's, it's fun. Glasses and contacts are calibrated differently because of even if you think it's a minimal distance between your eye and the glasses lenses that has to be compensated for. And contact lenses, because they're directly on the eyeball, don't need that kind of compensation. So it, it can be a little, a little bit of a change when you switch out. So I am going to go in and I want, I originally when I thought about doing this get ready with me is I thought about talking about my Charlotte Tilbury my new Charlotte Tilbury palette, the limited edition Pillow Talk eyeshadow palette that I have been loving. I love the formula in the Charlotte Tilbury palettes, hands down over almost everything else that I have. I believe they are worth the money investment because they're just, they're so easy to use. I put them on, I'm usually getting ready at about 5.30 in the morning and I'm wearing makeup until eight, nine o'clock at night or if I have something after work or I'm out even later in the evening. And for me, my makeup has to hold up. I am not doing touch-ups. I am not gonna be sitting there finding time to, to, to do some more makeup outside of maybe reapplying blush if I need to. It's just not my life, it's not my jam. So if I'm gonna wear something, it's it's gotta stick around. And if it's not gonna stick around, then it's, it's really not gonna be a part of my life. And what I have found with these guys, in particular with the mattes, they don't have longevity. I have a really hard time getting them to stay in the crease, even with a primer. And it's really, really unfortunate. I have to use a primer. If I don't use a primer, I get really awful creasing very fast. And it just, it annoys me. So we are going to get into it. And the reason I wanted to do this today is because I was looking at it and I was like, I like this green here and this greeny, greeny, sort of, I'm not gonna call it sparkly because there are more sparkly ones, but shimmery. I like those, that is what I'm going to go in with right now. The deeper green did not stick around the last time I used it and I was super duper duper ignore, uh, ignored, annoyed with that. 
So I'm just gonna come in and when I'm doing daily makeup, there's nothing, I don't get too fancy. I don't get too hung up on, on let's, you know, let's make it really, really hard hitting. See, and this is actually giving me nice pigment today. And this is what is so frustrating about these shadows is some days I have a really, really easy time. And then other days I have a really butt time and I'm not a fan of that. I'm all about making my life easier and I want these shadows to blend and just be beautiful. If I want them more pigmented, I can make them more pigmented. If I were going to something where I'd be interested in that, I'd do it. But I, I mean, just again, for daily everyday wear, I'm not hella interested in making them super saturated. It's just, it's not my jam. I just want stuff that looks nice, looks interesting, looks different. Because I do have hooded eyes, I do bring whatever I'm using on the lid or the crease up much higher so that I have pigment that doesn't completely disappear and you can still kind of see it. Because I'm not using a mirror, I'm actually looking at, at my screen as I'm filming this, I'm finding I'm applying it much higher. I tend to do my makeup differently when I'm wearing contact lenses than I would when I'm wearing my glasses because the glasses frame out my eyes differently and require a little less. So I'm not setting, I'm just going right in with the color I have found with the Natasha Denona that if I set first, that is a part of the problem with it just sort of blending away very quickly and disappearing. And on this, I might do a check-in later just to, just to show you if it looks like it's, you know, super faded on me. What I'm talking about when I say it, it fades away. I'm not doing this as part of my normal routine this morning. It is about the middle of the day and I'm getting ready for the rest of the day. And I'm just, I'm blending, 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 lots of blending. These can look a little bit patchy if you don't blend, 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 super important. And again, just trying to take that a little bit higher. I am very fair right now. It is winter. My my summerness is gone, so even my freckles are hibernating a little bit. Up close and in the lighting in here, you can you can see them a little bit, but they do fade. So in person, they're not as noticeable. Sorry, my nose itches. I'm just gonna take some more there. It's looking a little patchy on the eyelid. I do have a little skin imperfection on this particular eyelid. It's almost in my hairline. It's, it's, a spe it's a specific kind of wart that I guess is common to happen. I have no idea how I got it, where it came from. I've had it probably for 20 years now. It, it stays relatively small, so it's okay. I don't really want it removed or to have it removed because I don't want to have eyelash, eye, 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 eyelash loss in terms of having it removed. I also, I find, I get really jealous of you ladies out there who can get more of a pointed, a pointedness here because of how round the area is. Even if I try to, you know, kind of get that cat eye look going, it either looks weird or it doesn't look right or all the shadow ends up really heavy in the crease. I love Wayne Goss. He has some videos on that and trying to, trying to work with your eye shape and, and minimize that just a little bit. I'm trying to decide if I want to dip into the slightly darker color on this one or if I just want to go straight into the shimmer. Get a little, a little deeper here. And I also find that I do at times get fallout, even from the mattes on these, which I don't really get on the Charlotte Tilbury. I'm just in love with that palette right now, I think is what it is. I love the colors in this Metropolis palette, though. I could just sit and stare at it all day, every day. I can't tell if it was fallout or an eyelash. I do have an ouchie. I picked at my skin. Don't do that. Don't be like me. Don't pick at your skin. I'm dealing with some, I I have some irritation. I think it's from Sriracha, which I've stopped using now. I love Sriracha on my breakfast burritos. And I think it was irritating or the skin around my mouth that somehow when I was eating, it was getting there. So it is healing up nicely, which I really appreciate. If it comes back and it, it only seems to ever be a problem in the winter. In the summer, my skin's oilier. It's not an issue, but once my skin is dry, forget about it. I have all kinds of issues. I will go see a dermatologist if it comes back, but right now it's just, it seems like it's just dermatitis that's going away, which is really nice. So that is the green. Not, 
Not my favorite tone right now because again, I am fair and I look like I have pinkness and I do have pinkness on my cheeks, which is distorting my natural color. But uh, I think in the summertime when I have more of a golden, a little bit more sun, I think that that is going to look much nicer. And I'm just trying to figure if I want to deepen this out or if I want to leave it. I, I'm not really, I'm not really caring for this on camera. Let me look over. See, if I look over at the mirror and how it looks in real life and just the lighting here, it is super light, almost unnoticeable. Let me get a little closer. I mean, I notice it and I notice it's greeny, but it does not look the way it looks here in the camera. Hmm. <laughs> just trying to see if I want to go a little deeper. I'm just gonna do I'm just gonna do a kiss of my brush here in the deeper one. And I probably should have told you the first brush I was using. So my first brush, this is a pro blending from Sephora number 27. I absolutely love this. It lays down a lot of eyeshadows that can be a little harder to work with because of the formula more smoothly and blends them much more nicely. I, I find that I really like this particular brush. Uh, the one here, this is a Sonia Kashuk blending crease brush that I'm just going to kiss. Do, do, do. Just going to kiss that slightly darker shade there and just... Get it worked. Get it worked gently here. Here into this corner. So something else I wanted to update on. I've been doing the Turn It Around Thursdays now. And I, you know, I found that the last couple Thursdays have actually been really, really good since I've started thinking about using Thursday as a Turn It Around day. You know, it's the end of the week. If I'm feeling a little out of it, you know, or a little, a little down, weeks weighing on me kind of thing, having stuff going on, that just really being conscious on Thursday about setting the tone for the end of the week and the weekend has has helped. I'm just going to deepen this out just a touch, and it doesn't really look like I'm doing it so much here in the lighting, so I will just check in the normal lighting in a second. A mm, little bit, not a lot. See, this is this is my problem with these, is I feel like this is blending away. And it, the last time I had this problem, it was the darker one I used. And I just feel like it it just disappeared. I just like to pull that out a little bit. See, this side's looking, looking a little better. Did I just get a ball out? Ball out annoys me. It's a, it's a thing. I'm used to it. I'm used to cleaning up from it. But it just, every time it annoys me. And it could just be that I'm trying to do this in the monitor. And it's it's killing me. I get a lot of bald patches right along my lash line, even if I apply stuff. It's unfortunately for me that's normal, but again, we're gonna we're gonna apply that shimmer, so I'm not overly concerned. Just keep, just keep blending, blend city, right? <sighs> See, I'm just. I don't know. I don't know. Straight on and then real light in the real life mirror. I like it more. It seems like it's got some more depth to it than it does. Again, right in the monitor. That's so frustrating when that happens. So I'm just going to take a little bit of this. I might actually need the mirror for this. Yeah, I'm going to. I'm just going to hold up the... Uh, I did not do a good job on that. That was, yeah. This is why we're going to take the blending brush back and just uh, give it a little smooshy, smooshy. Highly technical terms. And I do like to take the shimmer all over. I think it's also part of the fun part. Uh, mattes, mattes to me are kind of a newer thing in terms of working with them. I prefer more of a shimmer, more of a satin. So I'm just going to dance that over a little bit and just blend that blend that together because I do find that that greeny it's sort of it sort of reminds me of a greeny gunmetal I do find that I like that and again here as I as I move over into the real life real life mirror I'm liking how it's looking it's looking much better much better than in the in the brightness maybe it's my ring light yeah I think the warm tone on the ring light on here is distorting Mm. All right, I just turned to the cool tone setting because I think the cool tone setting looks a little bit more like what it looks like in real life. 
So joy, happy, happy, joy, joy. So that's pretty much what I do. I'm just gonna take the mirror, see if I have any fallout I have to clean up. No. Sometimes I will take under my eyes, but I find that the Natasha Denona under my eyes irritates and makes my eyes water, which then messes messes up around. I also, with the shape of my eyes, sometimes I don't like to take around my eyes so much. But what I will do, I'm just gonna compromise here because I do feel like my under eyes need something. I've got an Anastasia Beverly Hills number 12 spoolie and brow brush. I'm just gonna take a touch of that darker. Just a little smoosh, smoosh, smoosh here. I'm just gonna just take that. I don't want it smoked out at all. I just want it along the lash line here. Beep, beep, beep. Yeah, so turnaround Thursdays really aren't working. And when I sat down and I looked at my month and in one of the last videos I made, I was talking about how I wanted to get away from fluff. And when I was thinking about what my fluff videos are, I was like, well, my makeup videos are kind of fluff. They're not, yeah, that helps just a little bit. They're not really, you know, the, the core of what I want to be doing on my channel. But I realized looking at the analytics that that's what people want to see. My my video is more talking about makeup. Haha, <laughs> see my grays. Are, are what tend to represent a little bit better. So I think that I can, I can mix in some of the other stuff while I talk about this. And I just, it was part of my, my monthly check-in with myself. I was like, what's working, what's not. I just really wanted to be cognizant of, you know, what content's working. I've wanted to do a get ready with me. I'm really not buying a whole lot of cosmetics right now. I have a ton of stuff that I really want to use and love and, and get the use out of. And I feel like I just, I don't want to bring in new stuff unless actual stuff is, is going out. And I'm just not there yet with stuff going out because I did weed through stuff that was no longer performing the way it should because it had probably expired. That I'm, you know, I'm working through things that I'm not wearing or I'm not really wearing frequently or it's getting decluttered and really loving the stuff that I have. So that's, that's what I want to talk about today. And now what I'm going to do, I don't wear foundation. I do prime and I am really loving the instant moisture glow top secrets from YSL. So that's what it looks like there. I don't find that it's super glowy, which is nice. It doesn't make my skin oily at all, which can be a problem. I While parts of my face overwhelmingly are dry, I have figured that out. I have figured out moisturizer to use to compensate for that. So the dryness is gone pretty much. Again, the spot I picked up, my daughter asked me this morning, Mommy, what's wrong with your face? She's two. Mommy, what's wrong with your face? And I had to bring my face close to her on the changing table. And she held my face in her hands and she's like, Mommy, what happened to your face? Ouchie. And I said, yeah, Mommy picked at her face. Don't pick at your face. And I, you know, I had to assure her that it didn't hurt. She was very concerned. She's very concerned this morning for me, <laughs> which is super cute. Uh, she's also she's also weirded out by the fact that I'm not wearing my glasses. And she'll be like, glasses? Mommy, where are your glasses? And part of the reason I don't want to wear my glasses is because we, we bonk. Things happen. She bonks. And... My glasses I've had for years. I can no longer get them from my eye doctors. They no longer carry my Oakleys. And they were pristine and beautiful and gorgeous. And from being bonked and hit and, you know, general kiddo stuff, they are not anymore. And they're starting to loosen. So I just, I want to wear the contact lenses when I have to be worried about, you know, being a mom in contact sports. So this is my Adept Cosmetics palette. Oh, hi. See, see, it's all, it's all icky and it sits on my... It sits on my countertop, so I pretty much have almost all of my single shadows and depotted shadows and then blushes. Depotted as best as I can in here. And then I do have some some other palettes, some more recent stuff that doesn't fit and I'm not depotting that are out on their own. Uh, I have really been trying to work with a new one that I got to this guy here. So this is Pinch Me from MAC to be a filler for a Tarte blush that I absolutely loved, that I got in a 500 points perk from Sephora. They do not make as a, as a, as a big one. And really irritates me because it was my perfect ideal blush for things like the middle of winter and warming the face up. This shade is a little bit pinker, a little bit different from MAC. It's supposed to be a really close dupe. It's the only really close dupe that I could find. 
I have a hair on my blush brush. That's making me angry. It's one of my silver hairs. So this is an hourglass number two blush brush. I just put it on there. I typically blow off excess. We're gonna apply this. Do, 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 do. And I just very lightly kiss it in there because I'm trying not to get too much. Like I said, it's I'm trying to use it for, and I know I'm not looking at you, so I apologize, but I'm trying to use it for, you can see some of my texture in there. As a replacement for something I really, really did love, it just frustrates the daylights out of me, to say the least. I'm just gonna move over here so I can see how this looks in the, in the regular mirror and see because of the redness, especially on this one cheek, I have redness all around. It just really distorts whatever I use and makes it look so much pinker. Not that this isn't pink to start with, but it just, it just makes it look more clowny than I like. I'm just looking to see if I have anything in here that I can kind of tone that down with. I'm gonna use, I'm gonna use Party by Tarte. It is a cooler tone blush. And what I have actually found with this Pinch Me is I like it much better paired with Party. Usually I put Party down first and there's just something about them together that works. So I'm just gonna do that now. All right, so yay, so that's done. I'm just gonna step aside here so I can set that down because eyes are next. So the first thing I'm gonna do is brows. I have a couple of different brow products that I use, but my favorite that I keep coming back to is my Anastasia Beverly Hills. This is the Tinted Brow Gel in Brunette. It looks very warm, but it's it's not. It just, it does something nice. And since my brows are kind of cooler to start with, I actually, I really enjoy this. And I find I keep coming back to it. It's not a hard hold. If I want a hard hold, I have Benefits Clear Brow Gel and I have their Gimme Brow in number two. Even though my hair looks like it should be darker, it's really not. It's not as dark as it appears, and I find that almost blonde shades, taupes, blondes work. If I get brunettes or start getting like more brownie shades, if they're super dark, which this one isn't, but if they're darker and more true brown, then they just they look wrong. They look too dark. It look it looks like I've I've tried to. Tried to, <laughs> tried to do my brows in an unnatural way. So I, but I really, I really like and enjoy this. And that's about all I do to my brows. I, I like my brows. They are relatively filled in. If I find they are not getting filled in, I do use the Bravo conditioning oh, primer from, from Benefit, which I found really helped with eyebrow growth for me, which was nice because my brows were looking a little crazy, a little crazy town. Especially this guy who looked a little bit sparser, like this is my nice brow, this is my naughty brow. My naughty brow was looking a little sparse in some areas. That really did help. So I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna bring, I just have a double-sided mirror from Sephora here. I think I got that as a point perks years ago. I'm just gonna come in. I don't do anything fancy with my, my little Sephora guy here. I just hold, just press, 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 press. I don't mind check mark eyelashes. When I'm wearing glasses in particular, I have to curl them. My eyelashes are super long. The ends are blonde, which is frustrating because it makes them then look short. But they are super long, and if I don't curl them, they rub up against the lenses of my glasses and leave unattractive little schmears. And I hate that. So my favorite mascara, and the only mascara I really use right now, is Estee Lauder's Double Wear Zero Smudge Lengthening Mascara. I find that I have such issues with smudging. Like seriously, like crazy, let me go back to my mirror here. Crazy, crazy issues with just smudges. And I don't get that at all with this. I just have to be mindful if I put my Becca under eye color corrector on, which I do sometimes if I look tired, it just acts like an under eye highlighter. Then I, then I have to be careful because for some reason that interferes with the formula of this and I can get some smudging. But this just on its own, it is beautiful. Haha, <laughs> sorry, you see my hand there. And I don't get I don't get the smudging that I would get otherwise. 
I have tried so many mascaras. I have tried high-end. I have tried low-end. I cannot use drugstore to save my life. It, it, it all smears and smudges. I have had people, I just got it on my eyelid. I have had people who are like, oh, try this, try that, try that. This works, this works. You know, it's great. And I try it. I'm just like, yeah, I look like I went swimming wearing this. And now it's now all over my face. So I'm just going to take my fun little trick and give it a second here to, to kind of dry a little. And then just use the spoolie to get that off. I'm going to kind of even it out a little bit by coming over here and just spooling a little. It's a minute, somewhat lighter. And that doesn't get all of it because my eyes are a little bit crepey. So it's in there. Nothing I can do about it now. So I'm just going to do that. I'm trying to figure out if I want to do any bronzer. I'm just going to swirl this. Get this a little bit more diffused. Try stuff. I want to do a bronzer today. I'm going to move this guy real quick because I forgot to pull my bronzer out. So the bronzer, I have two bronzers. I have a bronzer in an NARS palette and it's okay, but it can make me look a little, it can look a little off. It's, it's super matte. And then I've been using this Too Faced Natural Lust bronzer, which I love. And it works fabulously as eyeshadow too. It just looks super natural if that's what you're going for. I have two different kinds of blush brushes that I gravitate towards, depending on the look I'm going for. They are both Real Techniques. So this is a Real Techniques blush brush, but I find that I like it if I'm getting more in here. It just, it fits in that area better. And also if I wanna do a little brontour action, it fits beautifully. And then this guy is the Real Techniques 300. I love this. I have an extra of it. I love it so much. And I think I'm gonna use this guy to day just looking in the mirror and I I don't know I need a little bit and I just I just swish it around the whole thing I don't I kind of concentrate on the lighter spot but I like I like the darker it's if you had darker skin than mine I I don't know if this would work for you it seems like it is made for somebody who is fair and I just kind of tap it off a little bit there and I'm just gonna kind of get it right around the perimeter I don't get real fancy with my with my bronzer. I just I try to try to warm up the parts of my face that need it so I look a little less like I'm sick. <laughs> That's a problem with winter, isn't it? We end up looking like we're like we're sick. All right. And it looks it does look a little weird because the lighting is picking up a lot of the sheen that's that's in it, but in real life it I it, in real life it looks good. I actually have to take my word on that. And then that is pretty much it for makeup. I mean, again, if I wanted to get experimental and play with some brighter stuff, I could. But I, no, this is this is pretty much me. And the last thing I would go in for would be a gloss or a lipstick. And this is the Charlotte Tilbury Matte Revolution lipstick in Bond Girl. Which is, is a ready matte. And I'm putting that on just because I love it. I, I love I love this formula. I thought I hated matte lipsticks until I bought this, and I I love it. I love it, Charlotte Tilbury. Oh, I love I love your matte formula. It looks beautiful. It stays put. It is long lasting, and it looks fabulous with the look in the in the regular mirror. So if more backed up, more more natural. It it looks really nice. So I am a huge fan of this guy really huge. So I'm going to wear that. I'm going to throw it back in the drawer. I am today wearing one of my NARS. Oh, it's the NARS orgasm. Whatever their lip balm is, it's not really lip balmy. I don't understand how we can call something that isn't really a lip balm a lip balm, but hey, that's just me. I love NARS. NARS has products that I absolutely love. Fangirl over Dior or their lip glosses. I have their lip oil sitting right, right here. I'm trying to use up that balm so I can get it out of my collection and focus more on their lip glosses and lip oil. Honestly, NARS's lip glosses are more moisturizing than that, than that lip balm. So again, things that frustrate me, I'm just gonna, my hands are really dry. I use Lubriderm Advanced Therapy and I have that here in my bathroom for my, my legs that get super dry and chapped. I'm just gonna throw some on my hands right now. And that is pretty much it. That This is what I do every day of the week. 
I get more experimental with the eye shades, the blush, the blush that uh, that Mac pinched me is very bright. So in real life, it looks good. I don't think I have to add any more to it to make it something that looks good on the real. And that that is it. I again, I don't use foundation. I might highlight, but because like the bronzer I use is sheeny. Uh, the two blushes I used today were both very matte, uh, no no sheen to them, but a lot of times I'm wearing more of a sheeny blush. I won't do much of a highlight. I find on me, just because of the shape that I have going, I don't know, I feel like the light hits where I want it to hit and looks the way I want it to look without having to do a highlight. If I'm having a day where I'm feeling particularly dull or where I haven't bronzed or I'm very matte in terms of all the rest of the makeup, I might apply a little bit of highlight, but highlight really isn't high on my list of priorities. I like a more natural highlight. My cheeks are very large. My forehead is very large and I feel like highlighter doesn't, highlighter doesn't help me achieve <laughs> any kind of, you know, any kind of structural alteration or making my face look any different. And sometimes I feel like it enhances things I don't necessarily want it to enhance. So that's my shtick on highlight. I do, I, I do again, I like glowy primers. Becca's Backlight Priming Filter is one of my favorites and it can act like a highlighter if you run it down your nose. So if I'm using a product like that, I also don't really need a highlighter. The YSL primer doesn't really give a whole lot of, of gloss or isn't very sheeny to it, but I do find that it is glowy. So I think that that helps underneath, at least for me and for my bone structure to really kind of give me what I want. And that's, again, that in that aspect, I'm looking for fairly simple. So just uh, again, a quick get ready with me. I'm gonna go on about my day. If you can see, I have some notes. I was working on this last night and I wanted to do, really just do a get ready with me and a quick makeup today. I, core desired feelings. I was looking at how I wanted to feel and really just feeling like I wasn't doing activities that were getting me there. So the turnaround Thursday is helping because it's making the end of the week less of a train wreck. And when I started reflecting on the past month and how I felt toward my core desired feelings, it was like, they feel really, really far away. So part of this nice planning is, well, what can I do in the next month to maybe get me closer to how I want to feel so that I'm not feeling like I'm going off the rails? And I just, I felt constantly discouraged in February. Just everything felt like slogging through mud and everything still feels like slogging through mud and I'm trying to get through that. So really what I think would move me closer to what I want is, I'm just looking at my notes here, is choosing what works for me and actually making it happen. Being able to verbalize it, being able to plan it, being able to say, look, something doesn't work for me, I'm gonna cut it out or there's a better way to do this and that's how we're going to do it and really making that non-negotiable, really sitting down and saying, this is what we're gonna do. So for the new month's intentions, what I have done is I've added in some core desired feelings and I've made it in a tree because really what you want at the root and at the goal of this, the base to make it strong is you wanna be happy, right? You want life to be enjoyable. You want the life you're living to be enjoyable. So I started look, really thinking that I had these really basic three core desired feelings that I wanted to work on, lit up, sure, and intoxicating. And I'm like, well, I have these words, but I'm not really getting to those feelings. And why am I not getting to those feelings? And is it because those feelings are really just surface feelings and what I'm looking for is something underneath that? So I added in ease and content. I wanna feel at ease. It's not just happy. And it's not just wanting things to be easy. I want to be at ease. I'm tired of second guessing and doubting every decision I make. And I find that in the tenor of today's society, you say or do anything and you're either questioned immediately or you're forced into a position where you feel like you have to defend yourself. And I'm just so tired of feeling like I have to defend myself all the damn time. It's like, if I say or do something, I said what I said, I did what I did. If I was wrong and there's a reason why I was wrong, then I will apologize and address it. Great, fine. But there's a reason I say things the way I say things or there's a reason I do things the way that I do things. And sometimes you can't explain at the time, the reason I'm doing this is because X, Y, Z, because if you explain the reason you were doing something a certain way, that might be far more inflammatory than, the reason, than, than how you actually did something. 
and you can't always fully explain yourself to someone because sometimes there, there, there are reasons why, you know, right? It would be like explaining something to your kid. My daughter's two. I'm not going to explain to her why putting her hand on a burner is bad other than to tell her, ouch. I'm not going to say, honey, you could get a really bad burn and we could have to go to the hospital and they could have to do skin grafts. It's unnecessary. The bottom line is don't touch hot ouch. That's all she needs to know. Don't touch hot ouch. So I, I just, again, it just, I feel like there's this idea that everyone is entitled to everything, which means if someone asks you a question or, or if someone shows interest in something that somehow you are obligated to just tell them everything they want to know. And everybody's not entitled to every piece of information, particularly about your personal life. Let's get real clear here and let's be real honest. You know, you can ask questions all day long. It doesn't mean you're going to get the answer and it doesn't mean you're going to get the answer you want. So, uh, just again, ease, 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 you know, and feeling attacked because let's be honest, when people don't get the answer they want, right? They'll tell you, you're not answering my question. No, you just didn't get the answer you wanted. People have a tendency to attack because for some reason they think that if they attack, they're suddenly going to get what they want. I hate to tell you this. It's not how things work. I could be real clear on that. And for me personally, someone attacking me is the quickest way to make me shut down and just be like, mm, yep, see ya. So I want to focus on things that feel good and moving forward with joy and grace. Really, really long winded tangent there. And, it, you know, it talks about what is the opposite of your core desired feelings. So what is the opposite of being lit up or what is the opposite of the core desired feelings? Well, feelings, feeling depressed, depressed feelings are the opposite for me. And what I find is I end up in those depressed feelings, not talking about depression. Depression is something very different. If you're suffering from depression, seek professional help. That's a whole different ballgame. But what I'm talking about is the occasional depressed feelings that we all have, right? The occasional anxiety that we all have around things in our life. And what I feel like is I fall into this trap of once those feelings start happening, I sort of spiral into that and have a tendency to stay there. And that changes your outlook to a very negative outlook. Well, when, when how you want to feel is over here, but how you're feeling is way over here, you got to be able to bring those together. So I wanted to do more of what lights me up and more of what, what makes me feel energized because realistically what fuels all of this is the feeling of energy and the feeling of being present and engaged in your life. So filming was one of those big things and scheduling filming and making sure that I'm sticking to that schedule. I got really, February hit me really hard because I was, you know, when you're not, when you're filming and you're trying to put up all this stuff and you're hoping it's interesting and you're hoping it's reaching the right audience and it's helping someone, you know, and I, you don't have subscribers or you don't have views, you don't have people seeing, you're seeing your stuff. It can be extremely discouraging. So you're like, well, why am I filming this and putting this up and taking this time out of my life when I could be doing other things if no one's going to see it? Because the ultimate purpose is, I'm hoping someone sees something and it helps them. <laughs> I mean, realistically, otherwise you're just making stuff to make stuff for yourself. And while that's all fine and well and cool, I, the whole point of being on a platform and having something public is so that other people see it. So I wanted to stick with the filming and I did download the YouTube Studio app, which for whatever reason I hadn't really thought of before until YouTube was like, hey, YouTube Studio app, let's go. So when I started taking a look at that and started taking a look at the number of views on things, even if people aren't subscribing, things that I was thinking were the least impactful that I was doing because I just enjoyed it, particularly with makeup, were actually the things getting the dang views. And I was sitting there thinking because until I had that app and was actually seeing it in my face, what the analytics were, I was thinking, man, I'm going in a way wrong direction. I'm putting this stuff out that might be considered fluff. People don't really care. It's not really reaching anybody. And it turns out that was the exact stuff that I probably should be doing more of, which is super duper exciting because I love and am passionate about makeup. It's something that I find fun. It makes me feel better to do makeup in times where I feel really out of control. If the one thing I can control is the eyeshadow shades I'm putting on my eyes. That's, that's gangbusters. That's going to help me do what I need to do. And starting to think about, am I really tired or is it just these depressed feelings that are pulling me out of alignment with all of the good stuff I want to feel and do 
And now I'm laying in bed just surfing Facebook or just watching random YouTube videos because I'm feeling really bummed out. So I want to start working more on my meditation and visualization practice, actually working on that. And my daughter, some some movies that we really like, uh, the Kung Fu Panda series from DreamWorks is really a favorite. And I was, I was watching and, you know, we think about this idea of meditation is you need to have your sacred space and you need to be in this sacred space and, you know, it's got to be quiet. It's got to be beautiful. It's got to be, the lighting's got to be right. But as, as I'm watching things like Kung Fu Panda and thinking about it, no, th these are practices that are done. Out, they're a form of meditation and martial arts that are done out in the open, out in the world, out in the sunlight. You know, if you've ever seen things, you can see, you know, the practice and the movements, you know, done in Central Park, right? You can go to a class in a local park. Well, there's going to be, there's going to be street noise. There's going to be people. There, there's going to be people watching. And a big part of it really is being able to center and ground in self, no matter what your surroundings are. And I think that's where I'm failing on meditation because I've been treating meditation like it's this really sacred practice. It's very personal and private and the space has got to be right. and I can't be interrupted. And it was making it really hard to find time to meditate because that's not how my life works. Sometimes I have five minutes and it might be five minutes sitting in the living room with my husband in there while he's doing something right? Or it might be with my daughter. If I can and take things more internally and really refocus on what meditation is to me and how it works for me, I think I'm going to have a much better, better time with it. Same thing with visualization and just being able to slow down and really start scheduling time for filming and posting. I know the days I want to upload, but really being able to sit down and say, no, this is what I'm filming. I'm filming it XYZ. I'm editing it. I'm getting it uploaded. We're ready to go and sticking to that. I was really, really good at that beginning of the year and before the year started. And then February, just like I said, just, just kind of hit hard. And then really paying attention to what is getting views. Because if I can sprinkle in the stuff that I want to sprinkle into, into a video about makeup, bonus for everybody, because people who are there for the makeup want to see it and maybe they get to take away an additional message with that as well. And that's really what I'm after, right? Sharing some knowledge, sharing some experience and, and really getting out there and saying, hey, look, this is this is me. This is my life. Now, I'm not able to live stream while while I'm on my phone yet. YouTube has a minimum number of subscribers. So subscribe if you'd like to see some live streams from my phone. But I can certainly start doing some more vlog type stuff. And I think I want to do that as well because I feel like there's some real value to some vlog type stuff, particularly because I do want to be more talking about my life and things like that. And, you know, if I were really brave, I'd show you my incredibly disgusting, my husband's side of the sink, which is really dirty versus my side of the sink, which is not, but neither here nor there. Instead, you get to stare at my, my, I don't think it's soap scum. I think it's literally just water stain. <laughs> Again, I couldn't be bothered to deal with that today. So I'm going to call it for now. And again, I, Natasha Denona and I, we are having a love-hate relationship. I love how the palette looks. I hate how it wears. It's an expensive palette. And I kind of wanted the Biba palette, but I was able to find a cheaper dupe for the Biba palette that I really do like. And I really do like the eyeshadow and colors. But quite frankly, if the Metropolis palette doesn't perform, it makes me really reluctant to want to own, own the Biba palette because if I were to own something like that, and it not work, I'll be so mad. Oh, I'd be mad. And I hate having to return things. I return things that do not work because I do not have the cheat code for this life for infinite money like I do in the Sims game. So I do return things that don't work because I like makeup and I want makeup that works and I'm not gonna waste my money and have something that I'm gonna throw away sitting, sitting because if it doesn't work for me, I'm not likely to be like, hey, who wants this palette? Doesn't work for me, but maybe it works for you. I don't like that either. So it's just, it's a thing. Again, I'm staring at it because I, I love it. I want it to work. It doesn't exactly work with the sweatshirt I'm wearing, but the shirt underneath it would actually, the shirt I'm wearing under the t-shirt, I'm wearing this kind of mustard color. And I think would look really cool with it. It's just, I'm cold and it's winter and I'm wearing a sweatshirt. But uh, yeah, so that, that was pretty much it. Again, loving just Charlotte Tilbury. Hey, shout out. Maybe the next Get Ready With Me will be looking at the Charlotte Tilbury pillow talk.
the big limited edition palette because I love it and I do not regret purchasing it. And yeah, so February 2020, woohoo, we're almost through it. We're almost March. Spring is coming. Yay. But <laughs> have a great rest of your day and thanks for hanging in there with me if you have actually stuck with me all the way to the end. Adios.